So what does this Rush fan think of Envy of Nuns' debut album? All right, so April 8th, 2022 has passed and Envy of Nuns' debut album has come out. And now there's you know been a couple of days for people to hear what's up with the new band, Alex Lifeson, obviously. That's what most interests Rush fans anyway. And we want to know how it went. You know, what do we think about the rest of the songs? Two of the songs were released before the album released. Obviously, Liar was the first one, of which I did an extensive review and reaction to that one. I think it was the first YouTuber to do that, by the way. Also, Look Inside was the second one. Both very interesting songs. But now we have the whole album, and I get a chance to hear it through a couple of times, looked at the lyrics somewhat, and preliminarily, for me, the album's really good. <laughs> I, I, I really like it. There have been some comments of people who say that, uh, because Alex Lifeson is in it, that's the only way that you would like this album. M maybe that's true. Us Rush fans are into a certain kind of music, especially Rush. And maybe this type of music may not be something that all of us expose ourselves to. But the fact that Alex Lifeson is part of this project and the music is so different from Rush, then, yeah, the band should take adv advantage of having such a name like Alex, Alex Lifeson in the band to get that name recognition so that they can um, bolster their popularity somewhat. Sure, I would, I would take advantage of that as well. The bonus is that the album's actually pretty good. I got the CD version and uh, heard the whole thing, and there's a lot of gems there. I think that the four musicians in the band really put their stamp on it. Now, the only person I know anything about before this project, obviously, was Alex. And as a Rush fan, I go to look to see, you know, what was Alex's contribution. And I think if you're going to expect it to sound like Victor, you're going to be disappointed. And if you're going to expect it to sound anything like Alex, anything that Alex has done before, I think you're probably also going to be disappointed. But, but! I don't think you're going to be disappointed in the quality of the music. Now, as far as Alex, Alex's part in the project, in the music, I think he's, it's more like he's a producer than a musician. In saying that, he's everywhere on the recording and he's nowhere on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> I think he made it a point to make sure that he didn't stand out, but that his ability to fill the space in the music, you know, it's definitely present there. I mean, he definitely is all over the place. The more you know about guitars and the sounds that they can make, the more you'll hear Alex. If you're someone who just, you know, just knows about the electric guitar sound and lead, lead solos and stuff like that, uh, you might miss out on what Alex is doing. But I think if you're a musician and you know what a guitar can do, you'll definitely hear a lot of what Alex is doing. And I think for the Rush fan, it's a good exercise in making your ear or training your ear to listen to things that maybe you hadn't heard before. But I think overall, this is definitely, I, I think it's a really good record. I think it's really good. Now, I took a few notes that I wanted to talk about, about each of the songs. I won't take long because I, I, I want you guys to actually dig in and listen to the music because I think it's it'll be worth your while. Um, so I'm going to put my glasses on because, you know, it drives my wife crazy, but I can't can't read without the glasses. Um, you know, no spring chicken. So I think as far as the sound of the CD, I think I think overall it's pretty good sound. I think the treble or the highs are a little bit muted, I think, at first, but not the whole record. I think it's it's pretty well balanced. Look inside actually brightens up. I think it's the third third song on the on the CD. Um, but yeah, I think they could have done a little better with turning up the treble a little bit. But you can always use a tone control on if you have one of the a receiver that can control that or use some um, software to boost up the treble a little bit. As far as Maya Wynn goes, uh, I mean, she has a lovely voice. I mean, she has a very beautiful haunting voice and um it doesn't hurt that she's pretty cute too that's right i said it i think i would have liked to have heard maya's voice even a little more forward in the mix it's such a great instrument in the band her voice and it, it, as as great as it sounded and all of the textures that she recorded with her voice i think um i think it could have been a little more a little even a little more forward but yeah her her voice is is fantastic and the the cd actually sounds like uh 
a soundtrack. It sounds like it's it's from a movie. If Alex and any of the members ever wanted to work on a soundtrack, or maybe they have worked on a soundtrack, uh, some of them. I'm not too familiar with the, the history of each of the members except Alex. But this definitely sounds like a soundtrack CD. And there's a song particularly that I'll talk about that emphasizes that point. So as far as the songs go, there are 11 songs, and three of them actually stand out to me, three and a half, maybe four, as outstanding, outstanding songs. The The first song, Right Off The Gate, Never Said I Love You, fantastic song. It, has a, it actually kind of has a little uh, Judas Priest beat to it at the beginning. You got another thing coming, that song. <laughs> uh, when I started hearing, it's like, hmm, this sounds like Judas Priest. But no, it definitely does not. The song itself does not sound like Judas Priest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Never Said I Love You is a great way to uh, begin the the record. And unexpected, because all I heard was Liar and Look Inside, and completely different from something with, that ha has a beat like this song. So great, great way to start. It's a beautiful song. A Shadow, it's kind of like um, the second song. It's kind of like a mix of reggae and techno music. You know, kind of like even has a little bit of reggaeton. Um, if you put so, uh, put some drums to it, uh, like reggaeton, it'll sound just like a, just like that genre of music. But yeah, it's a pretty uh, interesting song. Look inside. Many of you have heard it already. Um, it's kind of a like, somewhat haunting song. It's kind. It sounds kind of aquatic, like if it's under underwater. It's a, a scene from a movie where maybe uh, things are taking place underwater. It's kind of like has kind of that kind of vibe. Liar. I've already done a review on that one uh, on another video. I ain't even gonna say anything about it. You can just watch. Uh, my reaction to that song. Spy House is uh, one song that appeared on AlexLifeson.com, uh, his own website, and there's some lyrics to it now. And this seems like a proper rock song. This sounds like Alex Lifeson more, I think, than any other song on the CD, uh, on the record. Uh, it has an Alex Lifeson solo. I think it sounds like there's some strings uh, interspersed a couple of times, uh, but yeah. Uh, Spy House is definitely an, an Alex Lifeson sounding song that many Rush fans would recognize. The second of my third favorite, you know, three favorite songs on the record, Dog's Life. It's not like Rush's Dog Years. Let's not mistake that from uh, Tess for Echo. Uh, this is definitely its own song, Dog's Life. It's very big. It's very grand, uh, dynamic, has a very steady four, four on the floor driving beat. It's, it's a killer, killer track. At it's two, uh, like I said, three songs that I like the most. This is this is definitely one of them. Kabul Blues, also from Alex Lifeson's website, alexlifeson.com. Alex's stamp is on there as well, kind of a subdued solo, and it also has lyrics to it, which it didn't previously on on Alex's site. Old Strings, um, that's the third of my top three songs uh, on the record. Man, this is a beautiful melody. I mean, it's, I mean, there's a lot of things going on in this song. It might be arguably the best song on the CD. Uh, it has beautiful melodies. You can hear Alex playing constant uh, swelling notes up and down, kind of like the, the foot pedal that he used to use a lot. Um, it's kind of has that kind of vibe to it. It almost sounds country, like a little country music. It's very romantic sounding. Uh, has it like a world music sound as well. It's, it's a complex song. I mean, it's definitely a standout. It might be the best song on the CD. Dumb, I mean, it's a fun song. <laughs> it's it's a dumb song. You know, it says one plus one is three, that kind of thing. A little quirky. Next song, Enemy. I mean, it's a menacing sounding song. The CD is kind of like, sounds like a, a soundtrack to a movie. Uh, this definitely sounds like, you know, part of a scene where there'd be uh, something sinister or menacing or scary going on. Uh, that's, you know, aptly named too, Enemy. So yeah, that's the 10th song. And last and definitely not least, Alex's uh, instrumental. The CD ends with an instrumental called Western Sunset. It's the song that Alex wrote for Neil, dedicated to him. And there are other videos on YouTube, and you can find them on how the song came about. But the gist of it is uh, Neil and Alex were on Neil's, uh, I think it was his back porch, watching the sunset in the West. And um, afterwards, it kind of reminded Alex or informed Alex on a little instrumental uh, dedicated to Neil. It's kind of like... I heard it a couple of times, but I re I can't really hear it very often. It's very it's very sad. If someone does not know the backstory to the song, you know, it just sounds like a a nice little instrumental to end the CD. But if um, you're a Rush fan, 
it's a whole different meaning now that we know that the song is dedicated to Neil and the friendship, you know, the friendship that they had that the three members of the band shared. And my friends at Rush Fans, the YouTube channel Rush Fans, did an absolutely fantastic montage of Neil, of pictures of Neil and video that they put to the to the song Western Sunset. I'm going to link to it in the description below. It's definitely worth a watch. It is, um, you know, it's poignant. It's um, sad. But, um, you know, that was our Neil. And I think, as Alex always does, he captures the mood brilliantly as far as what he wants to express about his friendship with Neil. And that video that Rush fans put out, you know, it's definitely worth a watch. You may, you may, uh, it's a tearjerker, uh, but it's definitely worth a watch at least one time. To me, it reminds me of a song like The Garden from Rush. You know, same thing. It's 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 not song. It's not a song that I can hear very often, without you know getting very uh, emotional. This song is like that as well. So yeah, that's um, you know that's my spiel on this this record, Envy of None, their debut. I love it. It's uh it's really good. I didn't I didn't think I would like it that much, uh, but it definitely surprised me. You know, never said I love you. Dog's Life and Old Strings are my three favorites. And maybe Old Strings might be my favorite one uh, of the record. I mean, it's really good. I made a series previously about Rush not winning a Grammy. And they were nominated seven times. Six of the times were instrumentals. And they lost every time. And you can watch that playlist. And I don't know what, like I said before, I don't know what, what are the qualifications or the criteria that they use for selecting the nominees and the eventual winner you know i think it's a little suspect if you ask me this situation is is different rush fans never cared if their band won a grammy or not if they did that would be cool but if envy of none won a grammy or two i think that would be really special i think the content of the music is pretty high and there are definitely some highlights of wonderful great songs on here that I didn't expect and I'm hoping that uh, it does get the recognition it deserves I mean all four of the musicians are you know they're accomplished we know mostly about Alex but you know I think Maya Wynn is a revelation I think she's she's a fantastic musician a really good artist fantastic lovely voice um, and I think it's uh, you know we'll be hearing a lot from at least from her because she's way the youngest of the four but you know this is definitely a springboard for her but in any case i think in, in regards to alex um i think to me i think he was very comfortable in this situation i think now it's not a it's not an alex lifeson solo record it's not at all it's a group project he just happens to be one of the four and each one of them had their part in what they uh, were doing in the band and if you listen carefully, if you know what to listen for, Alex is all over the place. But, you know, if you listen to it from a topical level and you're an Alex Lifeson fan, you, you're barely going to hear him. But I think that's exactly what he wanted to do. And I think he accomplished that brilliantly because I, I assume that if you got had the mix of the record and you took out everything Alex did, there would be nothing there. Or very little. I mean, got to give credit to the other musicians. Obviously, they put their part in too. But uh, I think Alex was a major part in the final sound of the record. And this is a really good one. Uh, so I, I congratulate Envy of None. I'm going to listen to this thing a bunch of times. And I haven't felt like that about new music in a long time. So I thank you guys for giving us this great music. And, you know, hopefully we'll see some more in the future. So that's my review. Envy of None debut album. Great album. Go check it out. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.